What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Darien is Fishing. I just want to say thanks to Zone Lock Hooks for sponsoring today's video. If you guys have never heard about Zone Lock Hooks, they're a really, really neat hook company with some really cool features that I'm going to break down. So here's what we got. Here's the Gamagatsu. I've got thousands of fish on it. And then here is the Zone Lock Hook. And you can see it's got that bend right there, what they call at the main bend. And basically what it does is fish dumps into that main bend quicker because this length, this short length right here is shorter than on this one. You can see how that's got a really long straight shank right there before the fish gets to this bend. This one has a shorter shank right there then the fish drops into that bend. So yeah, that was the quick details about Zone Lock. If you wanna learn more about Zone Lock hooks, I'm gonna put the blurb on the screen. You can screenshot that. I'm also gonna leave everything you need to know as well as a link to their website in the description box below. One thing in this video I wanted to talk to you guys about is I'm selling my, my big boat, my fiberglass boat, and I am downsizing to aluminum, which I'm super excited about. I'm also downsizing lakes that I live at. So I'm right now I live at Gunnersville. I'm moving back home and moving to a much smaller lake. And when I do that, I'm not only, I'm not just downsizing my boat just to get rid of this really nice boat because that's not my overall plan. But I know that a lot of you guys, um, either one, you don't have the ability to even have a boat like this, whether it's the size of lake that you fish or the vehicle that you have. Uh, you know, you might be, you might only have a car, you don't have a truck to pull a boat with. So that's one thing that hinders you. Or let's face it, these things are ridiculously expensive and so that's a big part of not having a boat like this too. So when I downsize so I can familiarize uh, or, or just be or, or just be more um, relatable to all of you, that way the things that I'm teaching you about fishing, you guys can actually do. Because some of the things that I teach about in this boat, you guys can't even do. So I want to fish out of the aluminum boat more, as well as fishing out of my kayak more, as well as fishing ponds more. Because that's me getting back to my roots. That's how I learned how to fish. And truly, that's what I love. It, it, I don't just love fishing out of this boat on Lake Gunnersville every single time. I just love getting bites and setting the freaking hook. And that's what got me into fishing. And that's what inspires me to get all of you into fishing. Um, I'm still going to do all the big boat stuff. I'm always going to do that stuff. I'm never going to get away from that. But um, just getting back to my roots is going to be kind of nice. So today's video, I'm going to grab my rods. I got, um, well, actually, I need to get this uh, wacky rig tied on and a Texas rig tied on. But I'm going to go down to the pond today, local pond a couple of local ponds in the neighborhood that I'm staying at and maybe y'all see some more videos from these ponds soon but enough talking I'm going to jump into the rigging of this video show you what I'm fishing with today throw my rods and my tackle in the golf cart head on down to the ponds and see if we can film a cool video for you guys so we go ahead and get rigged up now as I said earlier zone lock makes literally all different kinds of hooks and they sent me all of them on my wacky rig they have a wide gap octopus, drop shot octopus, wide gap circle hook. I know I don't want that one. Spinnerbait trailer. No, I don't want that one. Offset shank worm hook. Don't want that one. Okay, so the hook I'm going to go with for my wacky rig is this wide gap octopus hook. They've got several different sizes of it. Uh, looks like seven different sizes. So I'm going to go with that wide gap octopus that's gonna be perfect for the wacky rig on the uh, clout worm and again i've never used these hooks so y'all are about to find out my dead honest truth because they said give me your dead honest truth don't just tell us that you like them because we're we're asking you to tell us what you actually think and if they asked me to lie i would have done the deal anyhow so i'm sure you guys know that about me by now all right so i got 10 pound fluorocarbon with a braid backing, I'm just gonna rig this up on a Palomar knot. Y'all have seen me use this rig a million times. But I'm just taking the clout worm and I'm just gonna run it straight through the dead middle. A little bit on the head side, a little bit heavy, just like so. All right, now we're good to go. I'm gonna set the uh, my clout worms, packs of hooks, pliers, cutters. And my chesty, let me make sure I've got battery. All right, got my lure locker, camera, and rods and reels. Let's go jump in the golf cart and see you all at the pond in a second. Oh, it's starting to rain on us already. That's always good luck.
another thing is, I've never been to this pond before, so I literally have no clue at all what I'm about to get myself into. I see these ponds every day. There's three of them here, but I have never fished any of them, so we'll see if this first one's any good. Then you got this little one right there. And then there's another tiny, tiny one. This one's actually pretty good size. That's a good size, little healthy little size pond right there. I see a lot of turtles. Oh god, there's a gigantic grass carp with a bass right there beside it. Dude, there's another gigantic grass carp right there. I mean, that one right there is huge, huge. Holy crap. Alright, I'm going to start with the wacky rig just because, dang it, I forgot my sunglasses too. I meant to bring my sunglasses. I'm going to start with the wacky rig just because... And if I don't get bites on it, I'm going to swap up to the, uh, or even if I do get bites, I'm going to swap up to the Texas rig. Um, I need to remember what the name of this hook is. Okay, this hook is called Wide Gap Octopus, and this is the one aught version. So, let's just keep that in mind as we're fishing. And I see a bunch of brim around this bank, so I'm literally in my first cast. I've never made a cast into this pond before. So that's literally is my first cast right there. Yo, there is some gigantic grass carp in this place. I just see them out there in the middle. I can't, obviously can't catch them on this stuff, but I wonder if you can catch grass carp like on corn or something. Oh, got one already. <laughs> as soon as I cast, <laughs> okay. As soon as I cast over there, it, he threw my worm off, but he has not came unhooked yet. That's the good thing. Oh, dude. Okay, that's sick. Had him pegged right there in the top of the mouth. Didn't come off, but I did lose my worm. Little guy. Not bad for the first fish in the pond. Now I gotta make the walk of shame all the way back to the dang golf cart to get more worms. But that did just remind me of the giveaway that I was talking about. So I told you guys that on the first fish catch, uh, we would do a giveaway. That was the first fish catch. That was about my third cast in the pond. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a dozen packs of hook, uh, hooks from Zone Lock. I'll probably pick, probably just use the two that I'm using today because those are probably the most popular um, an uh, EWG Magnum hook and a circle hook to do like finesse fishing with. So I'll do a dozen packs, six of each, or a dozen of either one if you want that. To anyone who likes this video and drops a comment down below, that's all you gotta do to be able to win. But I wanna go catch some more fish, so do that. And in the meantime, I'm gonna rig up a new worm and head out back to over there to the pond where they're biting at. I should, yeah, I guess I'm gonna just go ahead and slide the golf cart down there too, in case that's where the juice is. All right, got another clout. Dang, this sucker bit it instantly too. I'll make the exact same cast. So there's a little like drain over there, like a little like waterfall thing where the water gets out of this out of this little pond. And I just threw right over there in the deepest spot where the water's flowing out at. So that's definitely my favorite places to start at ponds is uh, anywhere where there's water moving, whether it's water coming in or water coming out, especially on places where there's like a flat, like a a, a, a dam and then there's a, some sort of a cr little creek like this happens a lot at ponds where there's like where the water goes out of the pond at the fish just pile up around the dam normally a little bit deeper there's a little bit of current moving from that water running out so uh just ha there's just more normally there's just more habitat going on wherever the water runs out of the pond at all right i'm gonna, I'm gonna walk around the pond grab this other rod and See if I can get on the other side and maybe catch some more. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna put this rod down and throw this stroker crawl over where I saw that bass at earlier. Oh God. All right, 
cast this wacky rig right off the end of that point. And again, I'm just gonna let it fall on slack line and I'm watching my line the whole time and then pump it up a couple times, reel up and then let it fall again on slack line. Pump it a couple times, let it fall on slack line. And when a fish bites it, you're gonna see your line as it's fallen your line is going to jump like you'll just see it make a big different motion and it'll look like it's either falling a lot faster or just completely swimming off in a different direction and you know you got one all right enough beating the bank i'm going to start making some casts out in the middle which i haven't made any yet with the texas rig all while trying my very very best not to get bit by a snake All right, there's the first cast out in the dead middle of the pot. Hmm, there's one. God, he let go of it. Holy crap. Gigantic snapping turtle. Oh, and I just got bit by a freaking ant. There we go. Another little one. Tiny one, actually. This one's even smaller than the last one. Once again, he ain't coming off. Okay, here's a perfect example. Look where that fish is hooked at. Right in the sweet spot they're talking about. I know the fish ain't big, just look at the hook. Right there in the sweet spot, exactly what they're talking about. Not getting close to that barb, so not gonna tear another hole in the fish's mouth. And then now the hook point has to get pulled back out because the, the fish wasn't even actually hooked by the barb. So it's not cutting another hole back in the fish's mouth. When, you, when, the, when the barb tears a hole in the fish's mouth, that's why they come off because you just cut this huge hole in his mouth and the hook can slide back through it. So this keeps that hook point I mean, the, it keeps the barb away from the fish's mouth. Oh, there's a bunch of muscle beds right here. I wonder if I can just pitch and catch one. I didn't know there was these muscle beds. I think there's fry everywhere right here too. Little like one inch, tiny, tiny, tiny one inch bass. Ah, see, I didn't know about all this. All the carp are hanging out down here. Like, there's like four or five of carp right here. Now we're learning something. This might be the oasis down here. You got another one. Little, little tiny guy. I mean, a little bitty tiny guy. Once again, look where he's at. I know they're small. I understand that, guys. Y'all just chill. Look where he's pinned at. Right in that sweet spot, just like they said. Now I gotta go all the way back to the stupid thing. Get another hook. I mean, another worm. I think we're getting on a pretty serious pattern right now, guys. There is no way there is a bass that lives in that little bitty, tiny, shallow water. Oh man. Oh dude, I just saw a big one swirl out of that little ditch. It swam right to the mouth of that little cut. I can't make a good cast. Okay. 
camera battery died right as I saw this good one over here. Look like it's like a two or three pounder maybe. It was like tucked away in that really, really shallow water. And I couldn't uh, couldn't get to him. Again, there's a little drain pipe over there. I just love in little ponds like this, I just love throwing by the oddball things. Like that point over there, which I couldn't get to at that point over there. I would give anything to be able to catch one of those gigantic grass carps on a freaking wacky rig. Well, pond number one pretty much sucks. Caught some little ones. Now I'm gonna head over to pond number dos. All right, this is pond number two and it is tiny, tiny, tiny. But there's some rocks over there. Oh God, you gotta be kidding me. Okay. All right, we got one little patch of grass straight across. Let's see what that's hitting on. Surely we can catch a fish that just blew up. Got him. <laughs> All it took was a different approach. I skipped it over there to him instead of casting it by him. And he got it first try. There we go. Let's see where he's hooked. Again, exactly where they said he'd be hooked at, right in the sweet spot. And the hook point, I mean the barb, is staying away from the fish's mouth. Dang, that one's got his dang gills broke. Get back in there, buddy. That guy's all messed up. Well, the sucky thing about these ponds is they're too grassy for me to use the Texas rig. So I'm just having to like slow, I guess I could probably swim that Texas rig around, but it's like that old nasty grass. I'll, I'll just try it, heck. I haven't tried it. Maybe, maybe it's not as bad as I'm saying. Heck, maybe this is the ticket what I should have been doing all along. I'm just gonna swim it kind of close to the top because it's really, really grassy. So much so that it's not gonna let my bait work right if I let it get on the bottom that much. All right, guys, again, I'm just gonna show you really quickly the setup that I was using today. Zone lock wide gap octopus hook with a six cents clout worm, which is just a straight tail worm. Nothing fancy about it. And then you just take this hook and run it up straight through I don't know if y'all can tell, but like it's kind of rigged more on the top than it is on the bottom as far as the thickness of the bait. I rig it on top, that way the weight of it's down on the bottom. Also, it gives it a better hookup ratio. So that's literally exactly what I was throwing. That's what I caught all the fish on in this video. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this hook, it uh, like I said, I had never used it before, but it definitely did its job perfectly. There's the bend that they were talking about and it definitely held those fish. Honestly, these hooks feel good too. Like, I'm used to using Gamakatsu hooks. That's pretty much the only hook that I use or have only used for a while. And these hooks, like, uh, when uh, there was another company that came out, anyhow, there's some cheap hook companies out there that when you feel their hooks, they feel like junk. This actually feels like a great quality hook. I, I really don't know what else to say about it, but you guys can check it out for yourselves. They sell on Tackle Warehouse. Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video here at the pond. Um, I would say that, the, that those new hooks, the zone lock hooks, definitely pass the test for pond fishing for little fish. Caught maybe a pound and a quarter, was probably my biggest one. So didn't get to put the big fish test on them, which I really thought I was going to, just by the look of these ponds. There's some grass around the edges. The water's got this really cool, like blue color tint to it. And, um, 
yeah, I just thought I'd catch them. They're, they don't get fished very often. Actually, I don't think they get fished at all. So I thought I would have a good chance of catching the big one. That didn't happen. So the next video I post, next time I go to Gunnersville, whatever that is, I'm gonna use the those EWG hooks again and use them on a Texas rig, drag them out deep for some big fish, hopefully, and put the big fish test to those hooks. But I will say I never lost one today, which is good. I didn't even miss any. But again, we're working with small pond fish, so you know it is what it is on that but i promise you guys i will put those hooks to the real test on my next video so again thanks everyone for watching the video thanks to zone lock for sponsoring today's video uh, for more information check out the top link in the description box below please remember if you haven't already to smash the subscribe button turn on the notification bell like i actually couldn't turn it on and if you like this video give it a thumbs up remember to win the giveaway for this video you have to give this video a thumbs up and drop a comment down below for your chance to win. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you on the next one.